Now that the frame is done, we're going to get started on glassing up the wings. This is definitely the most rewarding part. I think it's the most fun. These are what make the hydrofoil work, so it's always a good time building these. So taking a closer look here, we have the stabilizer. This one is out of wood and it has a flat spot here. This allows it to sit flat with our fuselage because uh, if this curve continued, it would be difficult to get that angle of attack correct. And that's a pretty important part when you're building this. So we have this flat spot right there to make it super easy to get that mounted perfectly flush on the fuselage. And then in the back, we have our surf wing. Now this is 1,500 square centimeters, so it's kind of a middle of the road size wing. Uh, once again, as time goes on, things there's gonna be all sorts of different kinds of wings, but this is what we're gonna be using to start off with. It's got a great shape to it. We got some anhedral here on both tips. You can see that. And then it, just as this wing has a spot to mount the fuselage, so does this. One very important thing to take note of. This is EPS foam. It's expanded polystyrene. It is not compatible with polyester resins. If you put polyester resin on this, it's going to melt the foam. So the glassing process for these wings is pretty much the exact same thing we've been doing the entire time. We're going to glass one side of them, trim it with a razor blade, glass the other side, pour our edge, and then trim once again, sand, get everything nice and lined up, tailor up those edges, get them looking good and symmetrical, and then that's pretty much how you build these wings. The one difference going into this is when we glass up the wing, the leading edge in particular, we're probably just going to wrap the glass over this because it's a pretty blunt uh, curve there, as opposed to the trailing edge, which is sharp. So we'll just wrap around almost exactly like it's a surfboard rail. Um, so that's really the one difference. So when glassing up the wings, start glassing on the bottom side first. You'll see down the road why we do that. It just allows us to really shape the trailing edge nicely because we're going to be pouring that epoxy edge. So start with the bottom side first. Now what I've gone ahead and done is I've taken some masking tape and I have just done this. You can see that it's a little bit, it's not exactly halfway, it's past halfway because we're going to be wrapping that glass over the edge and then so when we wrap it over the edge coming the other way we'll have um, double the thickness on the leading edge so it's not vitally important but it's just something that's nice if you get it right and you don't need this masking tape at all I've done it without it uh, the reason I'm doing it is because when I come to trim it with a razor blade it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to get a nice even line going down the whole leading edge and you can see down near the tips that I didn't go all the way it's because you can only wrap the glass so much around the tips so you're not going to get the tips you know perfectly wrapped in both ways it's best to try the best you can but um, you know don't overly concern yourself about it so the directions that have been detailing how much glass to put on what parts will once again kind of walk you through how many layers what size and where we're going to be put, putting them on the wings. Um, but I already started here with the first couple. And just, you know, like everything we've already done, we're just going to wet it out. Now on these, on the first layer, when, you're, when we are doing these wings, it's nice to just have it extra have extra epoxy in there because you can see when this is milled and then sanded and finished it's not precisely perfect um, you can see there's a bunch of little dimples and divots in there and as long as we put a little bit of extra glass in the f a little bit of extra epoxy in the first layer or two those will fill in very nicely and they won't um, be a problem. So that is nicely in there. And now I am just going to move to my next layer. going 
going to line it up the best I can and then soak it out. So all of those inside layers are down and now I'm going to start with the first layer that will wrap entirely around the wing. That looks about right. So down at the trailing edge, we just want to wet out the glass right up to the edge. But since we're going to be wrapping the front, all of this we're going to want to, you know, wet out. So you can see I'm starting to just slowly wet that out and wrap it over. All right, so I have all the layers on there. Everything's looking great. This is all evenly wetted out, the trailing edge. And these are what the tips are looking like right now. And then you can see I have that wrapped nicely down to the tape on the trailing edge. So as this starts to set up and get tacky, I'm going to make sure that this is still hugging the leading edge very nicely and you can just come and kind of just stick it down as it as it starts to cure and then the tips I'm just going to do my best with so you can see it's kind of hard to get it to it wants to be like that right but once this gets a bit stickier I can come in here and um, you know start to shape it and just get it to hug the tip the best I can so that's that's the basic process for glassing you know the sides of the wings so compared to the main wing the stabilizer is super easy to do just lay out your glass and wet it out and then watch the wood grain come to life There's no uh, complicated wrapping because we don't really have a uh, blunt front edge. We want both of these edges to be nice and sharp, just like how we did the mast. So nothing overly complicated about it. So that's it for the stabilizer. Everything's nice and watered out. So I'm just going to wait for this to start to gel up. I'm going to stick around and as this epoxy on the main wing gets stickier I'm just going to try to wrap it the best I can around the tips make sure the trailing edge is uh, the leading edge is fine and then once it really starts to cure up just as before I'm gonna take the razor blade trim out my stabilizer I'm then gonna take the same razor blade trim the trailing edge flip this over trim the leading edge and just get it mostly trimmed off there so that once it's fully cured, uh, you know, I might need a light sand and then I'll be able to flip these wings over and do the other side. So this epoxy is now getting pretty tacky. I am able to just gently stick it around these tips here. So the epoxy has now gotten a bit tacky. And so you can see here, I can just gently just get it to hug the tips of the wings a bit better. Um, it's not We don't want to totally wrap them around the tips, especially when we're doing the bottom side. When we go to glass the other side, we're going to really want to wrap it around the tips. But it's just something to take note of as you go along with the build is because once this gets, you know, once it gets stickier, you can get it to do things you normally can't get it to do when you you know when it's freshly wet out but besides that the whole wings looking great 
and now at this point I'm just going to wait for it to get to that point where I can cut it with a razor blade and then I'm just going to trim both this wing and then also trim the stabilizer. Alright, so I went around the part, gave everything a trim, came out pretty good. I did, I wasn't paying enough attention and I did dig in a little bit right here, but that's not going to be a problem once we glass over. But everything's looking pretty good. These I'm just going to get afterwards. And then our stabilizer is looking pretty good. So once this fully cures, I'm just going to take some sandpaper and just very lightly get the edges, make sure everything's cleaned up, and then it's time to glass the other side. So the side of the wing that we've glassed up has now cured, and I am just very gently taking some sandpaper and cleaning up the back edge. I want it to be perfectly flush with the foam, so that's what I'm going for here. And also while I'm doing that, so this is our leading edge. You can see where our glass ends right there. That's where we cut it. And now I feel it. It's pretty smooth, but I can still feel a bit of a line. And so just like the trail edge, I'm just going to lightly sand that down. We want to be careful we don't sand too much into the foam or into the foam at all. Uh, but a little bit, that's okay. It's bound to happen. The process of glassing the top side of the wing is pretty much the same as the bottom. A couple things I want to keep in mind. I want to get a nice wrap around the leading edge. I want to make sure that on the tips the glass is wrapped the best I can. And then before the glass fully cures, once it's in that trimming state, I'm going to come in with a sharp blade and trim out this pocket the best I can. And then per usual, once that glass is once this is trimmed and the glass is cured enough but still not fully cured, I'm going to flip and pour a line of epoxy down our trailing edge. Same thing on the stabilizer um, and that's going to seal up those edges for us real nice. One little thing to keep in mind here as we do this top side is we want to be careful not to send a ton of epoxy down that. Um, cut out there in the center because then it will kind of make things a bit difficult when it comes to glassing that up and then putting in the fuselage so just carefully work around it and that will definitely help out a whole bunch so we're just gonna start wetting out layer by layer here So as the so at the same time of doing the top wing, I'm again going to do the other side of the stabilizer. Very simple, very easy to do, but unlike the other side, when we did the other side of this stabilizer, um, so we have that spot here in the center. That's a so it's a milled flat spot and that makes it really easy to get your alignment correct when you go to attach this to the fuselage. And so there's two little ridges, you can see them right there. And as we do this piece, we just want to be mindful of getting in there and trying to get that glass to really hug that ridge. Um, so you will occasionally get some little air bubbles in there as you go, but if you put some extra epoxy in there and then work the fabric just a little bit more in the right directions, you'll be able to get the glass to hug that very nicely. So that's one layer down and now I'm going to move on to the next. So that's just something to stay mindful when doing this particular part. So here's a look at the stabilizer all wetted out and then the top side of the wing. 
So that's what the leading edge is looking like. It's a pretty good wrap so, so far. Now, as this gets a little tackier, I'm gonna come in and just kinda tuck this whole thing under a bit more. And then I'm going to come on down to the tips, tuck them under a bit more just to help out. And then once I can, I'm gonna trim out this part and then flip and then down and along the trailing edge I'm going to pour my epoxy. Okay so this is getting to that point where I'm going to cut. I already cut this side um, but now I'm going to work on, on the other side. So it is a lot easier to do this right now as opposed to forgetting and then having to deal with it once it's fully cured. It doesn't have to be perfect, but the better you get it, the easier things will be. There we go. So now I'm just going to really get in there and trim it up accurately. And at the same time, I'm going to double check and make sure I'm happy with everything going under this wing as well. So this trailing edge is still a bit too soft, so I'm not going to flip it over yet and pour. I'm going to wait for this to get a bit stiffer, and then I'm going to flip it over and pour that edge. So I'm now at the point where I flipped the main wing and also the stabilizer over and I'm going to pour the epoxy edge. And the same thing with the stabilizer. This is no different than when we did the mast, the fuselage, all that. It's all the same, same concept, same technique. Uh, the only difference is because we have some anhedral, so this is curving like this. So these tips are coming up. And that's obviously going to make it difficult to get the epoxy to stay. I can already see it kind of flowing down this direction. Um, so I've done this before, and the way to do it is just, as it cures, just occasionally come up here and get a little bit more up in there. So maybe every, I don't know, come back and 20 or so minutes, see where it's at. You're gonna have to move some back up on both ends. And uh, worst comes to worst, you know, you can just do another pour and angle it and, and get it to stay up there. But it's not too tricky to get it to stay up in these tips. If you just come back every now and then, just give it a little attention and it will pretty much take care of itself. So that's it. Once this all cures up, uh, you know, we're going to do a nice final trim and clean these clean these wings up. Okay, so the edges have cured up, and now it's time to give everything a trim and a sand, just as we've done with all the other parts. And then we're going to get on to glassing up the mount position. Alright, so again, we're going to refer to the sheet of layering suggestions but we have a bunch of layers cut pretty neatly down in there and we're just going to wet those ones out and now we're just going to put the next couple in we're going to try to get these corners to be as tight and neat as possible and once these ones cure up, we're obviously going to trim them flush with the rest of the wing there. 
All right, so I have everything down in there, and this little popsicle stick kind of helps to get those corners nice and tight. So that's looking great. And once this, you know, gets to that point where I can trim, I'm just gonna take my blade and zip around the top edge here. So here is the wing. Everything's trimmed and sanded up nicely. And now we're going to mount the wing onto our fuselage. And this is just one tip that I've came up with that can kind of help get everything lined up because we want that wing to be mounted square. So I'm going to draw with our straight edge a line here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to with my eyes make sure that the trailing edge of the wing is lined up with this line. And now what I'm going to do is draw a line that is perpendicular at a right angle to this. That looks good. And then what I'm going to do with this line is line up one side of the fuselage along this. And that'll pretty much get us at 90 degrees. So I'm going to briefly walk you through how I have this set up. I'm sure there are probably better ways to do this, but this is you know, a quick and easy way you can do it as long as you have a flat surface. So the wing is lifted up on some blocks. Now these are even and flush, so this wing is now sitting flat. So its angle of attack is completely flat with this table. And then I have the back edge of this wing lined up with that line that we drew. And then you can look down the side of the fuselage here and that is lined up with our perpendicular line. And then to hold the mass upright I once again have this chunk of foam and I'm going to tape this end down at some point and that will allow me to finally adjust the angle that the whole mast sits in there. So you can either just use your eyes, which are usually pretty accurate, or you can take a bubble level and put it up against here and make the adjustments as needed once we start glassing up this area. And the last bit is I have shimmed up the back edge of the fuselage here. So what I did is I take a measurement up front from this bottom edge of the fuselage down to the table. I was using millimeters, it was 61 millimeters. And I shimmed up the, the back edge of the fuselage until that same height was 61 millimeters. So I know that this fuselage is flush and the wing is mounted flush. So that's how we want everything to be set up as we go into mounting this. So the first step is just take some thickened epoxy and lay it down in there. more so focusing on getting a good amount towards the back here because we just want most of it to squeeze out as we put this in. So I'm pushing down a good amount. I'm also trying to get things mostly square uh, because before we let this leave this alone to fully cure itself, uh, we can make the fine adjustments to make sure it's completely square. So we have some squeeze out in the back which is great. You can see these edges have some too and we're just going to put a bit more here all the way around. This is basically the same concept as doing any the other joints we've already done. Um, you know, let's just get epoxy in the sharp edges and corners. That way we can get some glass laid up in there and just get a stronger joint.
So there we go. That's looking pretty good. And now it's just to add these in. And one thing we definitely want to make sure we do before we do this, I already did it, is sand this area of the wing. Make sure you give it a nice sand and then sand this part of the fuselage. Um, you know, you just want things to have good bonds, so go ahead and make sure you do that before getting started here. So that's the first one, and now I'm just going to add my next layer. And I'm just going to keep going until we get them all down. And then I'm going to make my final adjustments. So all those are done in there. And now it's just a couple pieces that are going to go over everything just to neaten everything up. And doing these nice layers on the end pretty much make cleaning this up a lot easier because then we just sand, lightly sand this layer, you know, the edges of it. We don't have to get all up in there. Everything is laid up and looking great. Uh, it's nice and smooth all the way around there. And I just went through all my checks. I quadruple checked, made sure that I have everything as square as possible here. And then also my mast is square going this way. So as long as everything's looking good, just let it sit and cure. Okay, so the main wing is now glassed onto our fuselage and now I'm getting started on the stabilizer. And it's pretty much the same type of joint. So process is gonna be very similar. Um, so what I have now is, this is where that flat spot here comes in pretty handy because if that wasn't there, you wouldn't really know, you know, a baseline angle of attack as to where this should go because this top surface is curved. But because that's flat, as we go down there, if I hold that flat up against the fuselage, I know, you know, this is it. It's neutral here. It's not angled down. It's not angled upwards. So the angle of the stabilizer, you can adjust that. It does change how the foil rides. Somewhere on the website, there will be some information about that. It's very easy to give it a little bit of downward angle if you like that. Um, I've been riding these for a while. I kind of know what I like and I don't want any. So I'm going to glue it on here just flat. So just as before, I gave these parts a nice sand before I started. And I just put my epoxy down on both sides. Now I'm just putting in my little pieces of glass. So we just gave my once around look, making sure it was level in all directions. I'm happy with it and now I'm just going to let it cure. Keep an eye out for any bubbles that might form. Okay, so there we have it. Both of our wings are on there and glassed. Everything's great. We're pretty much done here. I'm very happy with how this has turned out so far. Now what I'm going to get into is the fine finishing. I'm going to get some sandpaper. I'm going to make sure every edge is nice and sanded. There's no bumps. I'm going to make sure that my wings are nice and um, the edges are nice and clean. And then I'm also going to get in where I just made these mounts. So I'm going to sand around those areas. And the same goes for our stabilizer. I'm going to get in here make sure that there's no sharp fiberglass sticking out and then once all that's nice and sanded then I'm gonna get into finishing which pretty much is just painting this with epoxy with a with a brush to give it a nice gloss coat and then I'm gonna sand that down I might do another one depending on how nice of a finish and how, how great that turns out and then I'm just going to paint and then that's it it's time to get this thing in the water and start having fun with it Okay, so I'm going to get started on finishing this. Now what I've gone ahead and done already is I've put some masking tape on the underside of this wing, the underside of the fuselage, the underside of the stabilizer. That's just going to prevent any drips 
from wrapping around it and getting hung up in there. Uh, it just makes it easier. You can go back and sand it afterwards, but basically I'm just going to leave this foil as it is. I'm going to, uh, with a brush, just paint on some epoxy on all the surfaces here, and then I'm going to flip it over and do the bottom side. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, you know, I just get some cheap, cheap paint brushes and just, you know, you really don't want it to be too thick because then you're going to get things, some epoxy is going to start to run on you and that, um, you know, is never great. So just go around the whole thing and give everything just a nice coat. And you can do this as many times as you want to achieve an absolutely perfect finish. Um, because once I'm done with this, I'm going to once again sand it with some pretty high grit paper. Um, I am honestly probably just going to do one. I don't want to spend forever um, making this. But if you were to do, you know, a coat, sand it, and then do another coat, and then even, you know, sand it again, and do a third one, I mean, you can just keep going and going until you get an absolute perfect finish. Um, and this is great because if you do have particularly in some of these joints it can be hard to sand everything real smooth without sanding into the glass um, too much I mean you can sand into the glass a little bit but you don't want to keep sanding into it because then all your strength is going to disappear so instead of taking away all that material what we can do is just build up a perfect finish by applying multiple finish coats um, so keep that in mind as you go along here Okay, so that first coat is down, and you can tell everything is already looking really good so far. Uh, and once all this cures up, and then I do the other side, I'm just going to come in and sand everything, and that's really going to bring everything to life. I love a really good sanded finish. I think it's better than this, which would be a gloss finish. But, um, you know, teach their own. All right, so that epoxy that we painted on has cured. I just went around the entire foil and sanded it um, up to 400 grit. So you can get into this as much as you want. If you want the perfect to be absolutely flawless, um, probably paint on another coat of epoxy and then sand back again. You can really just keep doing that until you know you have an absolutely perfect finish. But um, just one layer and one sand with 400 grit has gotten me. Uh, finish that I'm okay with and now I'm gonna get on to painting and to paint I just use spray paint um, nothing fancy I find that spray paint I have one that I painted a few years ago and I've been using it you know I don't use it every single day but that paint is still fine it seems to hold, hold up pretty well so you can just go crazy with your paint I'm probably just gonna do a couple stripes black and white theme um, Alright, so that concludes the build. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you learned a whole bunch. Um, I'm by no means an expert working with composites. These are some simple techniques I came up with. So you can hand lay up a hydrofoil with nothing but a razor blade and sandpaper. I bet there's a whole bunch of experts or people who are more knowledgeable in this than I am who just watch this and you're already thinking of a million ways that this could be done better and you know more proper technique. Let me know about it. I'm always you know, willing to learn. Um, I, I just want to show you guys that it doesn't take a whole lot. You know, if you're willing to roll up your sleeves for a couple days and then dive into a project like this, you'll be surprised at what you can get done. That's kind of the whole reason for what I'm doing here. Um, is I discovered that myself, and I want everyone else to kind of get into that because it's really it's a lot of fun. It's fun to build it, um, and once you get up and riding it. And, you know, get over that learning curve and, and start having fun flying above the water. It, it's just going to be a smile ear to ear. So stick around. I'm going to constantly have some some more stuff coming up, better techniques, different different foil wings and, and all sorts of stuff. So come back, check on this every now and then. We might have something new, something better.